It seems like the onward march of wireless technology cannot be stopped. I mean, we keep flinging more and more stuff through the airwaves at such a rate that it's gotten to the point where wireless routers and adapters lose their value the same way as a new car being driven off the lot. But even so, the latest devices beginning to hit the market feature a number of bells and whistles that could make them long-term solutions for even the heaviest users. I'm talking, of course, about wireless AC Wave 2. Well, wait a second, Linus. Didn't wireless AC just come out not that long ago? Yes, it did. And Wave 1 gear isn't bad. It brought a number of improvements over older standards like 802.11n and G, like doing away with 2.4 gigahertz and dramatically improving speeds. But they were stuck in the past in one very crucial way. A Wave 1 router or access point can only communicate with one device at a time. Well, hold on a second again, Linus. My old router at home has like 12 things connected to it at a time and they all work. So how can what you're saying be true? Well, routers and access points prior to Wave 2 have to communicate with all of those devices sequentially, assuming that it's only operating on one band. You can find out more about that in our video on tri-band Wi-Fi here. This can lead to network slowdowns and possibly wasted bandwidth. You see, Wave 1 devices support up to three streams, and what this essentially means is that you have three antennas coming off the router, and each one has a certain bandwidth, that is 433 megabits per second. If your client device has three streams, let's say a desktop rig with a PCI Express Wi-Fi adapter with three antennas on it, then you could actually triple that speed and get up to 1300 megabits per second. But most people's AC devices are more likely to be consumer electronics like smartphones, which typically only support one stream. And because Wave 1 routers could only connect to them sequentially, that means a full two-thirds of your router bandwidth could be left unused at any given moment. What Wave 2 does instead is use a new technology called MuMimo, M-U-MIMO. This allows the router to connect to multiple cows, I mean devices, all at once. So if you have a four-stream router and say a two-stream laptop, a one-stream phone, and a one-stream tablet, you can use all of your router's bandwidth, meaning fewer slowdowns, which is especially important for public Wi-Fi hotspots with a ton of devices connected at once. And, yeah, that's right, I said four-stream router, which is also a new Wave 2 feature, if you connect to a four-stream client, you can actually have a maximum theoretical speed of nearly 3.5 gigabits per second, more than two and a half times faster than Wave 1, since Wave 2 can now leverage up to 160 megahertz wide channels. So that's double the bandwidth of Wave 1, effectively meaning more room for your data to flow. But hold on a second, before you rush out and buy a shiny new Wave 2 router, there are a few limitations and caveats. Both your router and your device have to support Wave 2 to take advantage of the faster speeds and MooMimo. Older devices will still work, as Wave 2 is backwards compatible not just with AC Wave 1, but also wireless N, but you won't see the benefits in action. And keep in mind too, that while those wicked fast speeds with 160 megahertz wide data super highways might sound great for wireless 4K video streaming, which they could do, the practical limits of the technology will actually be lower in crowded areas with many access points and clients, like in condominiums where users of 2.4 gigahertz are already experiencing what it's like to have many access points competing for airtime where each of them takes up a full third of the available spectrum, which setting your AP to 160 megahertz would do on 5 gigahertz. I mean, it wouldn't be your problem, I guess, but your neighbor wouldn't like it very much. And speaking of things that your neighbor might like, mass drop. Head over to draw.ps slash Linus Tech Tips and check out the latest awesome stuff going on over there. They've got all kinds of things available on mass drop like knives or, you know, uh, monitors, keyboards, drones. Yes, the feature deal right now is a 3DR Iris Plus aerial surveyor drone. It offers 16 to 22 minutes of flight time, a payload capacity of 400 grams. It's got 
got a GoPro compatible camera mount and it can stream live from a GoPro to a wireless monitor attached to the Iris Plus controller. So wait a second, why would I buy this on MassDrop exactly? Oh right, lower prices. So the way MassDrop works is the more people commit to buy, the lower the price goes. And this one's lowest drop is $100 off retail, $4.99 US plus shipping. But if you're not interested in a drone, go check out MassDrop anyway, because they got all kinds of awesome stuff over there. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you disliked it, well, hit the other button. Also, check out our other channels. We've got a great video we just released with like wirelessly controlled cars whipping around a track that was pretty sweet. And leave a comment if you have suggestions for future videos. Subscribe, follow. Oh, and last but not least, a big thank you to Joel from MetaGeek for helping us out with this episode of Fast as Possible. Those guys over there really know their Wi-Fi and... Uh, yeah, so you can check them out over at, uh, well, Google MetaGeek. I don't remember their site off the top of my head, but...